Now in this video, we're going to be looking at cylinders. Well, cylinder takes us back to where we were talking about prisms, where we talked about rectangular prisms and cubes and triangular prisms, where we took the uh, length times the width times the height to figure, figure out how much it takes to fill it in. Well, the cylinder is a three-dimensional shape also. If you think about a can of soup, it has a circle at the top and a circle at the bottom, and then it has the straight lateral sides. So that's what we're talking about, is that we're going to talk about how we can find some information about this. We're going to find the volume, but we're also going to talk about the surface area, and that takes us back to nets. If I take a cylinder and I flatten it out, the outside of it that makes those lateral sides is actually a rectangle. The rectangle goes around, and then the top and the bottom are circles. So I'm going to take all the things that I've been working with since we came back from Christmas break and putting them all together. I need you to have a piece of paper because every problem we're going to work two different things on, but we're going to do one set first, and then we're going to do the second set. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a review, though, because um, we're going to do some rounding. The nice thing about this assignment is I don't have to use... 3.14159 on all these problems to get really, really long answers like we have in the past couple of lessons. It's going to ask me to round to the nearest tenth position. But we have to remember how to round because answer after answer after answer is going to have to be rounded. So when we talk about rounding, we talk about there's two different processes in which we do. The first one, if it is, the number is from 0 to 4. So that includes 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. If it's 0 to 4, then what's that tell me to do? Hopefully, you didn't say, oh, I don't know. Hopefully, you said, it tells me to leave it the same. And therefore, then the second one is from 5 to 9. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then those five numbers tell me to do what? Round up, right? So I have to remember those two things. We have to remember how we mark it and show our work so we know how we're rounding. So we have a place value that you're rounding to. If it says to round to the nearest hundred, or it says to round to the nearest ones, or it says to round to the tenths, hundreds, thousandths, I have to underline that position. The indicator is always to the right then, and the indicator tells me what I'm doing. The indicator is going to fall into one of these rules. We underline the place value that we're rounding to, we circle the indicator because then I remember that by circling it tells me that becomes a zero and everything else behind it becomes a zero. For instance, if I have the number 27 and I'm being told to round to the nearest tens or the nearest whole number, the nearest whole number is this outside number, so I know I'm going to underline the two and I circle my indicator, which is the seven. Then I ask myself the rules. Well, it follows in from five to nine. 7 tells me to do what? It tells me to round up. So this number is going to go up always by 1, no more than 1. So it becomes a 3. The 7 and everything behind it becomes a 0. There isn't anything else behind it. So I only have 1, 0. So I know 27 rounds to 30. If I have decimal numbers and it tells me to round, let's say to the nearest hundredths, I first have to know my place value in my decimal. So I have tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So on my hundredths, I know I'm going to underline the three. My indicator is always to the right. It doesn't matter. It's always to the right, so I circle it. So what does the four tell, tell me to do? Well, four is zero to four. It tells me to stay the same. So my three is going to stay the same. Everything in front of it stays the same. Since it's a decimal, my 4 could drop or change to a 0, but I'm just going to drop it off. We don't have extra zeros at the end of our decimal numbers. That's going to be important on the I-STEP test, on the NWEA, and in middle school. So make sure that we don't have those extra zeros. It's not a proper number with it. All right, so with the rounding reviewed, I need you to have a piece of paper. If you didn't get it the first time when I asked you to, pause your video, go get it. Remember in the end boxes in the top shelf, in the very bottom one, I have extra writing paper. Grab a piece, and I need to divide it in half long ways from top to bottom. 
This is going to be a long video. There's a lot of work that we're going to do. We're only going to be working for problems. I have a lot of work that I have to show. And on this paper, that's where you're going to show your work. I'm doing it on the board so I can always make sure that it fits on there. But showing every single step that is required to do these takes a lot of space. You may only get two problems on each side done. This may be one and this may be two and you got to turn it over and do three and four. That's fine. But keep the first column for volume and then the second column is going to be for the um, where we use the nets for the surface area. So when we do it, we're going to start with volume and then we're going to get into the nets where we talk about surface area. So volume, once again, is when I have a three-dimensional shape and I want to know well, how much would it take to fill it. So if I was pouring you know, Sprite into it or water into it, how much would it take to fill up this cylinder? Cylinders, once again, are three-dimensional shapes at the top and bottom are circles and then the sides are lateral or straight up which when we unroll it and we see the net we know that it is a rectangle. So in order to find the volume of shapes we talked about if I find the area of the base then all I have to do is multiply it by the height. When it was a cube or a rectangular prism it was pretty easy. It was just base times width times height or length times width times height. When it became a triangular prism, well, that's where it became a little bit more difficult because since it was a triangle, we had to take one half times the base times the height to get the area of the triangle and then multiply by the height of the three-dimensional shape. So on these, we're going to do the same idea. We're going to find the base first. We're going to find its area. That was the last video, right? Finding the area of a circle. So that should be pretty easy. And then I'm just left with multiplying by the height of the cylinder. That's going to give me my volume, or how much, the cylinder will hold. We know that with the cylinders, or with the basis formula, we have that it's pi r squared. So pi is 3.14159. r squared is the radius of whatever the circle base is. And then I want to multiply it by the height. So when I look at it, it tells me my radius and it tells me my height. That's all the information I need to do in order to do these math problems. So the volume of the cylinder, pi r squared for my base. That's where I'm going to start. If my radius is 1.2 and pi is 3.14159, I know what math I need to do. But here's where it's a little bit easier on this assignment. On this assignment, it says that we're going to round all of our answers to the nearest tenth. So instead of using 3.14159 every time, and I look at what pi is equal to, I am going to round to the nearest tenth, which is that first one. The four is the indicator. So what does the four tell me to do to the one? Tells me to stay the same, right? So I know that when I deal with pi on all of these math problems, all I have to use is 3.1. That makes your life a lot easier in doing these problems. When I take 3.1 and I look at it 1.2 squared, because that's my radius, so 1 and 2 tenths squared gives me 1 and 44 hundredths as my answer for my radii that's doubled. When I multiply those together then, I get 4.464. Now, if I'm rounding to my nearest tenth, then I'm going to have to underline my tenth position and circle my indicator. This is why we reviewed rounding, because we're going to have to do this on almost every single problem that we do. <clears throat> the six tells me to do what to the four? What well, tells me to round up? Everything in front of it would stay the same. Since it's a decimal, then everything behind it is going to drop off. So instead of having 4.464, I know that the six tells me to round that to a five, so I know what I'm dealing with is 4.5 square kilometers. That is the base for my cylinder. I'm going to write that then. I'm going to look at my height. My height is 3.6 kilometers. Notice I have kilometers squared and I have kilometers. So I'm multiplying labels where there are two of them and one other one and two plus one makes three. 
That's why on volume, it's always cubed. When I take 4.5 and I multiply 3.6, then I get 16.2 or 16 and 2 tenths cubic kilometers. You can write out cubic, Q-U-B-I-C. Kilometers is a little bit bigger of a word, but if you just write the K-M for kilometers with the 3 as your exponent, it makes your, your label a lot easier. We're going to make sure that when there's a place for an answer, we put it on the right line, because if we do that on the I-step test, we get the, the answer correct. If I don't write it in the right spot, and it tells me that I need to write my answers on the answer lines, there's no point in missing that point. So make sure that we put it in the correct, correct area, please. So when I go to question two, question two gives me this information. It says my diameter is 12.6 centimeters. My height is 7.5 centimeters. So what do I need to do first? Well, when I look at that this area of a, or volume of a cylinder, it starts out with pi r squared for my base, then I know that I don't have my radius, correct? What they give me is my diameter. So I have to start with multiplying by 3.14159, which is pi, but I don't know what my radius is. So I have to take 12.6 divided by 2. 12.6 divided by 2 tells me that each radii is 6.3. That's what I'm going to use in my math problem. So I put right down the 6.3 squared. But once again, I don't have to use that big long information for pi. The 4 tells me to round to a 1. So I know I get to use 3.1 instead in my math problem. When I take 3.1 times r squared, my r is 6.3, so I type in 6.3 times 6.3 in my calculator, and I see that it's 39.69. When I stack those and multiply them then, handy dandy calculator tells me that I end up with 123 and 39 thousandths. Well, I'm rounding to my nearest tenth. My tenth is a zero. My hundredth, my indicator, is a three. My three tells me to walk to a zero. Stays the same, right? So now I just have to write down the whole number. It's just 123.0. I'm going to get rid of that point zero because I'm not going to need it. But I know that I have 123 square kilometers, and then I multiply by the height. Because once I find the area of my base, then all I'm left with is finding the height for my volume. So if I multiply 123 times 7.5, I get 922.5 cubic kilometers. 922.5, or 5 tenths cubic kilometers, then gets written in my answer position. Once again, as on the last video, I already know this is going to be a long video, so I'm not trying to take forever to do it. But pause every time. Instead of trying to hurry and catch up and missing what I'm saying, just pause the video for a brief moment and write down the information that we're showing each and every step, and you'll be fine. I promise I'm going to give you extra time to get your homework done, so please don't stress about getting through the video to get your homework done. What I want you to focus on is understanding the video and understand what I'm trying to teach you here, because it's very likely that these are going to be on the I-step test. You had two of these on the I-STEP test two years ago and three years ago, so these are going to be important. On the third one that I'm given, I'm told that I have a radius of 18 feet. I'm told that I have a height of 27.2 feet. I know that I have to start with finding the area of the base before I multiply by the height for the volume. So area of the base is pi r squared once again. So my r squared is going to be 18 squared. My pi, I get to round to the tenths position because that's what the directions tell me to do. So I get to use 3.1 times and then 18 times 18 on my handy dandy calculator tells me that it's 324. Then I can multiply those together. Pi, pi, excuse me, pi times the r squared, 3.1 times the 324 gives me an area for the circle of 1,004 and 4 tenths square kilometers. 
but I have to continue forward because I'm finding volume. So my volume, then I'm going to multiply that by my 27 and 2 tenths. <coughs> and I just realized that I have the wrong label on this one like I did on the previous video. So I apologize. We'll make sure that we have uh, feet uh, when you write down your answer. But when I take the 1,004 and 4 tenths and I multiply by 27 and 2 tenths, handy dandy calculator tells me that I have 27,319 and 68 hundredths. Well, I have to round, don't I? Because it says to round to the nearest tenth. So my six is in my tenth position. My eight is my indicator. Five through nine tells me to round up. So my six becomes a seven. So I have 27,319 and seven tenths. Once again, I do have the wrong label. I apologize. It should be cubic feet, not cubic kilometers. The last one on volume then, it gives me that my diameter is 12 meters and my height is 18.6 or 18 and 6 tenths meters. So I have to find that area of the base first. My base is a circle, so I know it's pi r squared for my formula, but I don't have my radius. So I'm going to have to take my diameter and do what? Divide by 2 is hopefully what popped into your head. So I want you to pause the video now, work through question four, remember that first step that I just said, unpause once you have your answer, and then I'll show you the work that you should have done and gotten the answer to. So hopefully you have an answer for question four. You should have started with taking your diameter, dividing by two, and getting a radius of six, like I said, before you paused it. Once I have that, then I know that pi, 3.14159, is rounded to just 3.1, and therefore my 6 squared tells me that I'm using 36. So when I multiply my pi times my r squared, you should have gotten 111 and 6 tenths as the area of the circle. Then, all you have to do is go through and multiply by your height. Your height is 18.6. So you should have 116.6 times 18.6, which gives you 2,075 and 8 tenths. 8 tenths because I ended up with 0.76. 6 told me to round the 7 up to an 8. Once again, I have the wrong label. I need to start checking those, I guess, on my videos, so I apologize. It should actually be meters cubed, cubic meters and m to the third power. All right, so now we're going to part two. We're going to go to the second side of your paper where we do surface area. So we already put in about 20 minutes on this video. It's going to be about another 20 minutes on the video to get through surface area. So a lot of steps to it. It's not difficult math. It's just a lot of steps to it that I need you to understand and know how to do. Please pay attention to the video. Please take your time. I'm giving you extra time to get your assignment done, I promise. So please just focus on what we're learning. The first thing that you're going to notice is on each of these problems, I'm going to put a net for you on there so that you can see that every time that we're talking about a cylinder and finding its surface area, that we're talking about how much these bases cover and how much the rectangle that makes up the lateral sides of your cylinder take up. When I talk about how to find it, then what I'm talking about is finding the area of the circles. And there are two circles on my net. So I have to find the area of the circle and multiply it by two. So you notice on the formula down here, I have two times the pi r squared. Then I have to find the length and the height of the rectangle to find its answer. Now the difference here is, I'm never going to know what the length is. Because my length, when I wrap it around and make a cylinder, is actually the circumference of my circle. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the circumference of the circle, and then I'm going to multiply the circumference by height. Once again, circumference is just the diameter times pi, because there are always 3.14159 
total diameters that make up the circumference of a circle. So there's several steps that we're going to do here. Once again, it's not difficult math. Once again, we're going to keep in mind that the directions on the assignment tell us to round to the nearest tenth, so we don't have to use those five significant decimal positions. We only have to use the 3.1. So every time, that makes my math easier already by just using the 3 and 1 tenths for pi. So I have to go step by step on what we're doing. So you're going to see me solving for the circles in green and then solving for the rectangle in blue. To find the circle's area, I have to take pi r squared, but there are two of them, a top and a bottom, two bases always, so I know I'm going to multiply it by two. So we be begin with taking 3.1, which is pi, pi r squared, so I know it's 1.2 kilometers, so 1.2 squared. So when I have 3.1 times 1.2 squared, well, 1.2 squared is 1.44. 3.1 times 1.44 gives me 4.464. And I know there are two of them. There's a top and there's a bottom on my cylinder. However, I'm, I'm rounding all of my answers to the nearest tenth, so we want to make our math as easy as we possibly can. So if I round to the nearest tenth, I'm going to that 4, and that 6 tells me to raise it up to a 5. So I end up only having to do 2 times 4.5. 4.5, well it's $4.50, and $4.50 gives me $9. So I know that the area of my two circles is 9 square kilometers. I'm going to write that over here where I'm going to do my final steps in my math. I'm going to take the answer for each of the two things that I find and stack them over here to do my final step. So now I have to figure out what the area of the rectangle is. And once again, I'm not given information to know what the length of the rectangle is, but when I wrap that rectangle all the way around, I get the circumference of my circle for my cylinder. So I'm going to find the circumference and then multiply by the height that is given me, which is going to be the height of my rectangle. So I know I'm going to take 2 times my radius to get my diameter. Because in order to find circumference, I have to have diameter times pi. If I'm only given my radius, then I have to double it. So I have my 1.2 that I'm going to double, and 1.2 times 2 gives me 2.4. So circumference is equal to diameter times pi, so I'm going to take my 2.4 and I'm going to multiply it by my 3.1 because I get to round to my nearest tenth. When I multiply those together, I'm told that my circumference is equal to 7.44. If that is my circumference and I can round to my nearest tenth position, this 4 tells me to leave this 4 alone, it's going to stay the same. So I have 7.4 that I have to do my final step on this problem in. I have to multiply by the height. They tell me that my height is 3.6 kilometers. So my circumference of 7.4 kilometers, I'm going to multiply by my height of 3.6 kilometers. 7.4 times 3.6 gives me an answer of 26.64. Once again, rounding to the nearest tenth, my 4, my indicator, tells me to leave my 6 the same. Everything else since it's a decimal is just going to drop off. So I know I'm going to have 26.6. That's going to be brought over here. So I have 26.6 square kilometers for the rectangle of the net for this cylinder. I have 9 square kilometers, which is the area for the bases. There are two of them the two circles in this net. Now, there's a lot of steps to this. So my advice would be to go back and rewatch this problem so we make sure we understand the step by step. I'm gonna do all four of them. They're on this, this practice assignment before we talk about your homework assignment. So please, take your time and make sure you understand the steps to this.
my final step is always going to be here on my board. I'm always going to take the two of them and then add them together because that's what it shows me. To find the area of the two circles, because my bases are circles and cylinders, and add them to the area of the rectangle from my net. When I add those together then, I get 35 and 6 tenths square kilometers. Where it asks for my surface area then, I make sure that I write my answer and my correct label. Alright, so question two. Question two, same, same cylinder as when we were doing volume. Information that's given to me is my diameter. I'm given my height. I'm looking for my surface area. Surface areas, once again on cylinders, is finding the area of both circles, which are my two bases, and the area of the rectangle, which makes up the lateral sides of my cylinder. So I know I'm going to have to take pi r squared to find a circle, but I'm going to double it. I'm going to multiply by 2 because there are two of them that make it up. Pi r squared is impossible in this problem the way it's written because I don't have my radius. So I have to start with taking my diameter and dividing by 2. has to be my first step. When I start setting it up, I realize that it gives me my diameter. So I do my first step of 12.6 divided by 2 so that I know I can start writing out my math problem. So I know I want to take two circles. I'm multiplying it by it's an area of one circle. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's pi r squared, 3.1, times, this is going to be 6.3. So I'm going to plug in my 6.3, and r squared tells me to multiply 6.3 times 6.3. So when I double those, 6.3 or 6.3 times 6.3 is 39.69. Always rounding to the nearest tenth makes my job a lot easier on these problems. So I get to round, well, I guess I forgot to do that on this problem, but we'll do it here in just a moment. If I don't round it to the nearest tenth, then I'm going to get 123.039. Then I can round to my nearest tenth. Either way, I'm still going to get to the same answer. My three tells me to leave the zero alone. So I just end up with 123. I know that there are two circles that make up a cylinder. So my last step is to take my 123 and times it by two. So when I multiply it by two then, I end up with 246. 246 square centimeters is the area of the top and bottom bases of my cylinder. So I know I have to take that information and it's going to be in my very last step of my math problem. So I'm going to park it over here until I'm ready to come back to it. What I'm left with then in my net is finding the area of the rectangle. Once again, it doesn't give me a measurement, but the circle, I know that when I look at the side of a can, it goes all the way around that circle. So the length of that rectangle has to be the circumference of my circle. And circumference is found by multiplying diameter times pi. I don't have to do anything to that one because it's already given to me as a diameter. So I'm just going to take my 12.6, multiply it by my 3.1, since we're rounding to the nearest 10. 12.6 times 3.1 gives me 39.06. I get to round that one also. So my 6 tells me to leave, or not leave the 0, but to round up. 5 through 9 says to round up. So now I'm going to use 39.1. So 39.1, now I have to multiply it by the height. So all we did here was we found that the circumference of the circle is 39.1, and the circumference of the circle is the length of my rectangle because it wraps it around in that three-dimensional shape. Now I have to multiply it by the height. The height is 7.5. So when I multiply those together, I get 293.25. Rounding once again to the nearest tenths position, the 5, tells me to round the 2 up. So I'm going to have 293.3. My 293.3 is going to be over here, because then that takes me to my final step. So once again, 
246 comes from the two circles, the two bases, their areas in the cylinder. When I look at the net, it's this one and this one that make up this area here. The rest of it is the lateral side of the can, which is a rectangle when I make it into a net. So I multiply the circumference of the circle, because that's going to be the length of my rectangle, and the height. So I have my area, <coughs> excuse me, of the rectangle, my area of the two bases. I have to add them together to get my surface area of the entire cylinder. When I add those together, I get 500. 39 and 3 tenths should be yeah, square centimeters is the surface area. So where it says surface area, I need to make sure that I type in or write in my correct answer. 539 and 3 tenths square centimeters. Once again, a lot of steps to this. None of the math is really difficult. It's just remembering to go through step by step by step. So if you haven't written down what your formulas are on your answer sheet or on your math problem paper, then that's where some of you are really hurting yourself. Because you go to do the math problem, you don't remember what the formula is, and you aren't looking back in your book. Well, on this one, you can't look back in your book. You should be writing it down. And I have it down here for you every single time. So on number three, wrapping up on the last two. It gives me my radius is 18 feet. It tells me my height is 27.2 feet. I'm finding the surface area. Surface area talks about nets and how much area the entire thing covers. So I know I'm going to find the area of my two circles, which are my bases. And then I'm going to find the area of the rectangle and add them together. So when I find the circles, two of them, two bases, times pi, rounding to the nearest tenth, Let's me use 3.1 r squared and then in this case r is 18. So when I fill, write down my first step I know I'm going to take 2 times pi 3.1 times 18 squared since that's my radius. When I take 18 squared I have 18 times 18 which is 324. So I'm now left with 2 times 3.1 which is my pi times the 324, type it into my handy dandy calculator, I get 1004 and 4 tenths. It's already to my tenths position, so I don't need to round anything. But I know I have to double it because there are two circles. So <clears throat> when I double it, I know that my area for my two circles, my bases, is 2008 and 8 tenths square feet. That's going to be held over to the side until I come to the last step of my math problem. Now, I'm going to find the area of my rectangle. Once again, I'm not given the length of it, but I know the length is the circumference of the circle because it wraps around that entire can or that entire cylinder. So I have to find the circumference. Circumference is found by diameter times pi. And this one, I have to remember that it's only giving me my radius. So I have to double my radius. I have to take two radii in order to get my one diameter. So two times 18 tells me my diameter that I need to use is 36. To find the circumference, I take my diameter times pi. Pi is 3.1. So 36 times 3.1 gives me 111 and 6 tenths. 111.6. That is my <coughs> circumference of, <coughs> excuse me, of my circle, which is going to be my length of my rectangle. So my final step then is I have to multiply by the height, so the length times the width, or the length times the height, the base times the height. I know that my height is 27.2, so 111 and 6 tenths times 27.2 or 27 and 2 tenths. Handy dandy calculator tells me that my answer is 2,772 hundredths. I need to round, right, to the nearest tenth. So my seven is going to do what? So hopefully you said it's going to stay the same. The two, which is the indicator, tells me to leave the seven alone. So I know I'm going to take that answer 
and I want to add it over here for my last step. So I have 2,008 and 8 tenths, which is the area of the two bases, two circles. I have 2,707 tenths, which is the area for the rectangle that makes the lateral sides of my cylinder. When I add them together for my surface area then, I get 4,709 and 5 tenths square feet. So once again, since there's a space for me to put my answer, I need to make sure I write my answer in that space correctly and with the correct label so that I get my credit. The final one then, gives me the, the same cylinder as in question four, but you're going to use the diameter and you're going to use the height to find the surface area of question four. So pause the video. It'll take you a couple minutes because there's multiple steps to the math problem, but every one of you know how to do these steps, especially if you follow along today. Just look at the formula that you wrote down on your paper, follow the steps every single time, you'll get to the right answer, then replay the video, and I'll work through it. I'm hoping that you have an answer for question four on your paper. So let's look at all the steps we had to do. We have to find the area of the two circles, the bases. But one of the first things that you notice, just as before when we did the volume, is I can't use the diameter that's given to me to find the area of the circle. I have to take the 12 and divide it by two, because it's two radii for every one diameter. So I know I'm going to use 6. Then I can plug it into this first step of my formula of 2 times pi r squared. So my 2 times my pi, 3.1, r squared, my radius is 6, so I'm going to have 6 squared. Then I'm going to take 6 times 6, which is 36. That gives me 2 times 3.1 times the 36. I'm going to multiply 3.1 and 36 gives me 111 and 6 tenths. I need to double it because there are two circles. There's one at the top and one at the bottom, my two bases in my cylinder. So I know that I have 223 and 2 tenths square meters for my area of my bases. And then I wrote it over here to do it in my last step. Then I have to find the area of the rectangle. So I found the top and the bottom, the two bases, then I have to find the rectangle. I know that the length of the rectangle is always equal to the circumference of the circle of the cylinder. So circumference is found by diameter times pi. Once again, that's written down here as well. So it gives me my diameter of 12. I get that straightforward math. 12 times pi, 3.1, tells me that my circumference, or my length of that rectangle, is 37.2, or 37 and 2 tenths. So I have my length, I multiply by my height, they tell me my height is 18.6, 37.2 times 18.6 gives me 691 and 92 hundredths. And since we're rounded to the nearest tenths position, then that two, my indicator, tells me to keep my nine the same. So that's why over here you'll see 691 and nine tenths because I'm going to drop that 2 off. It's also square meters. So I found the area of my two bases, my two circles. Found the area of my rectangle. I add them together. That gives me 915 and 1 tenth square meters for my surface area of this cylinder. So we're finding two different things on our assignment. We're going to find the volume, how much it takes to fill it in. So my formula is pi r squared, that's the area of the circle, times the height. Once I multiply those together, I have my volume, but I make sure that I cube my label, because I'm going to have three things multiplied together with labels. I'm also finding my surface area of my net for the same cylinder. So I'm going to take 2 times pi r squared. So I'm finding the area of both circles, both bases, that make this up. And I multiply it by 2. Then that area gets added to the area of the rectangle. I'm not going to be given the length of the rectangle. 
So I have to find the circumference first of the circle. That's always found by the diameter times pi. And then I can multiply it by the height that is given. That gives me my two answers, my two areas, that I add together for my total surface area. Keep in mind that on this assignment, we're allowed to round pi to the nearest tenth. We're allowed to round each answer in our problem to the nearest tenth. So there's less math that I have to do there when they, they remove those two, three, four, or five decimal positions. It makes my life easier. Surface areas label is always squared. Volume labeled is always cubed. Now here's the thing. If you didn't get this video, if you didn't follow along, please re-watch it. There's time in class. I'm giving you the rest of today and I'm giving you the next class to do the assignment. There are more problems to work, but I'm going to be here to help you. And because it is so much longer, I'm giving you a day and a half to do it. So please don't fast forward the video. Don't skip the video. It's important that you follow along and understand these things. Once we get through this, this set, this ends geometry for right now, we're going to jump into the next video going back to what I introduced before on inequalities. And we're going to spend time on this because that's going to be mentioned a lot in your I-STEP test, your NWEA, and from this point forward in our book. Take your time on this video. It is a long one. It's about 42, 43 minutes. I get that, but it's worth it if you understand how this works because you're going to be tested on it. You're going to have questions on it. It's going to be on your I-STEP. It's going to be on NWEA, and none of it's difficult. It's just remembering how to plug numbers into these formulas and how to use the formulas. Have them written down and look back at it as many times as you possibly need. While you're doing your homework for the rest of this class and, to, and the next class, please come and ask if you have any questions and I'll be happy to help.